How does author Rosanna Michelotta Battagelli's Italian background influence her writing? Today on All About Canadian Books, we're going to find out. But before we do, if you haven't already, please hit that subscribe button. Author interviews are posted bi-weekly on Tuesdays and Thursdays, the second and fourth week of every month. Hi, my name is Crystal Fletcher, and welcome to All About Canadian Books. I'm so excited. This week's guest is Rosanna Michelotta Battagelli. Rosanna was born in Italy. She came to Canada with her family when she was three, along with writing historical fiction, short fiction, and creative nonfiction, she has had five romance novels published with Harlequin Quinn and two children's books. We'll be discussing Rosanna's short story collection, Pigeon Soup and Other Stories. It was published by Anana. And I love this co cover, by the way. <laughs> Rosanna, welcome to All About Canadian Books. Thank you so much for having me. I welcome the opportunity to speak about my books and writing, Crystal. Thank you. Oh, well, I'm really excited to hear about you speak about your books. Um, in particular, with Pigeon Soup, can you tell us what your short story collection is about? Certainly. And I would like to give uh, a shout out to the fabulous designer of the, the book, Pigeon Soup, Val Fuller. She designed the, the book and uh, the cover also of my historical novel, La Brigantessa, which won an award for, for the cover. So uh, thanks to Val Fuller of Inanna. Um, and of course, thank you to Inanna for publishing my books. Yes. Uh, so Pigeon Soup is a collection of short fiction and these stories reflect some of the challenges the characters have in life and what they need to do to resolve uh, you know, their issues, their problems, their concerns. And it, they show that life is not just about happiness and uh, light. There's darkness in life. There's shadows. There's loss. There's grief. Um, you know, there's broken relationships. Uh, and so, you know, it was suggested to me to uh, by uh, one of the previous uh, readers of the, of the collection to think of a title that would reflect the light and dark of, of life. And so I initially came up with the title, uh, yeah, uh, well, Pigeon Soup and Other Stories was my original title, but then I thought up of chiaroscuro, which is, of course, the, the painting term for light and shadow. Mm -hmm. and, um, and then my, the publisher, uh, my publisher at Inanna liked Pigeon Soup and Other Stories, and I was fine with either one. <laughs> so, so we went with that, and, and basically the characters, you know, uh, are tested, you know, their limits are tested, you know, with their personal lives, the, what they're embroiled in, and ultimately how they deal with these uh, challenges and, and, and trials in life. And, uh, and, and basically, you know, if they do resolve the issue, where, how they can move forward. So there's there's shadows, but there's also glimmers of hope and light yes. in these stories. Now, I was also really interested, Rosanna, because your stories, they really cover a wide range of issues um, from bullying, pedophilia, domestic abuse. When you sat down to write your collection, um, did you have these issues in mind or did the characters and the issue appear to you? Uh, well, over the years, you know, as a writer, you take in different stories, you hear different stories, you're aware of what's happening in the world, maybe in your neighborhood, uh, maybe with people you know, and you know, everything uh, incubates and, and settles into your brain. And at a certain point in time, you are inspired to write a story based on something perhaps that is a kernel of truth, for example, bullying, right? As a, as a teacher, 
of course, I came across, uh, you know, incidents of bullying, uh, you know, small and large. And, and so these, these uh, memories or these, uh, you know, uh, stories that you've heard about in the news, wherever, they, they begin to um, evolve into a story, a fictional story that you want to create. And, uh, and so this is what happened with these stories. So, um, you know, uh, the subjects are subjects that people will be aware of and, and people may sometimes identify with them or if, if readers haven't had personal situations like the ones in my, in my books, they will empathize with the characters that, that are going through some of these trials and tribulations in life. As I was reading your, your collection, you know, there's a real sense of the Italian culture threaded throughout your stories. I must say, I did feel like eating pasta after, like, <laughs> after reading them. So, I mean, how, how does, like, is it a conscious effort for you to insert your culture within your background, within to the stories, or does it just flow out naturally? I think, Crystal, that some stories invite that cultural background into, into them. Uh, for example, uh, my children's stories don't. They, they are, there's no, uh, you know, hint of an Italian background or mm -hmm. culture. They're more, uh, you know, for example, Pumpkin Orange, Pumpkin Round is my children's story, and it's a Halloween story for kids. Mm -hmm. uh, however, in La Brigantessa, my historical novel, uh, that story is set in 1862 Southern Italy where I was born. I was born in Calabria. And I researched that period intensively over many years and, and having, you know, I was three when, when we immigrated to Canada. And I went back, of course, to visit relatives and became fascinated with the history. So I, having read many, many books about what was going on in that turbulent period post unification, I decided I wanted to create a story to illuminate that mm -hmm. period with the characters that that I wanted to bring to life that that um, were representative of the characters of the time. So that, of course, was infused with all things uh, about my cultural identity and heritage. Wow. Uh, so, and and with pigeon soup, uh, there are some stories that are definitely. Uh, you know, uh, that definitely deal with mm -hmm. characters who have the Italian heritage and culture. Mm -hmm. And uh, although I have to say that the themes in the stories yes. are, um, are not themes that are exclusive to Italian culture. Mm -hmm. there, there are uh, themes, sorry, they are themes that can reoccur in uh, any culture and are evident in every culture. Mm -hmm. So, so they, um, although the characters uh, may represent one particular particular culture, they are um, showcasing stories that are experienced by m many, many cultures. Absolutely. Now, Rosanna, you're a prolific writer, you've got all of your books back there in the background, which I love. So what are you working on right now? Well, I have a few projects on the go. One of them is a collection of creative nonfiction. So stories that are based on, you know, my, my personal experiences, some family experiences. So that's one of the projects that I'm working on. Um, I am contemplating another historical novel ah. set in that very interesting and, and turbulent period of post-unification Italy, uh, but I haven't dug into research yet. Oh, that's exciting. <laughs> Thank Which you. will hopefully involve a trip back to Italy, yeah. Crystal. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. You'll make me want to go back to Italy too. <laughs> 
Rosanna, thank you so much for being a guest on All About Canadian Books. I really appreciate your time and you chatting about your collection, Pigeon Soup and other stories. So thank you. I will put links down below for our viewers so you can visit Rosanna's website, learn more about her, check out all of her other books, and you can also purchase a copy. Thank you, Rosanna. Thank you. Thank you so much, Crystal. My absolute pleasure. And to our viewers, thank you so much for watching and be sure to come back in a couple of weeks.